In the last set of videos, we talked about the importance of letters of recommendation and kind of the complex process in both asking for them, but also building up the relationships necessary to get good letters of recommendation. We're now going to be talking about your curriculum vita or CV and your personal statement. And we're going to first focus on the curriculum vita or CV. And this really is an academic resume. And what the purpose of this is, is to provide an, some very succinct information on the experiences and accomplishments that you have done as an academic, as an undergraduate student, all with an eye towards continuing your career and becoming a graduate student and eventually a professional. So one of the kind of, uh, kind of the mirror you wanna hold up to your CV is as you're creating your CV, you wanna ask, is this relevant to either my graduate career, what I accomplished as an undergraduate, or my career past my graduate education? If it's, the answer is no to all of those, it's not necessarily something to do with your academic success as an undergraduate. It doesn't directly apply to how you'd be a good graduate student, or it doesn't apply to what you eventually wanna do as a professional. It probably doesn't belong on the CV. So the curriculum vitae is Latin for the course of life, but most appropriately, your academic life. An academic CV should be a comprehensive listing of your career, applicable accomplishments, including career-specific employment, academic credentials, publications, contributions, and significant achievements. Now, if you decide to become an academic, your CV will slowly or maybe even quickly grow and become fairly large. A CV does not necessarily have a limit. Um, so resumes are usually going to be either a single page or two pages, no more. A CV can go on longer, but as an undergraduate, you really wanna make sure that you're presenting truly relevant information in that CV. We're gonna talk about this over and over again, but you wanna make sure that it is appropriate, it is something that is relevant to your academic life, either as an undergraduate or a graduate student, and that you're not padding the CV with irrelevant information. So it does not have a page limit compared to a resume. However, on average, I would say most undergraduate CVs that I have seen have been between no more than two to three pages long. It should be your entire academic and professional career. Let's talk about each one of these bullet points. Academic performance and accomplishment. This is not a listing of every single class that you've taken and the grade that you've gotten. This would be more things like how many years were you, or how many semesters were you on the dean's list? That might be a line. If you've actually completed your degree, the fact that you have a degree, um, either an associate's or a bachelor's, and what your minors are. Did you do an honors thesis? If you did, the honors thesis would be an academic accomplishment. If you actually did a capstone project, a lot of universities do not require an actual capstone research project. So even though it's a group project, that is probably worth putting on your CV that you did as a part of a group, an academic research project. You should have your professional affiliations. And again, I wanna stress that this isn't really that important, but if you are planning to go on to become a clinical psychologist, if you're planning to go on to become a social psychologist, if you're planning to go on to become an industrial organizational psychologist, all of those professions have their own national or international organizations that basically provide resources for those fields. You should join them as an undergraduate and you should list those on your CV. If you've had any academic publications or conference presentations, including even presentations within a university. So if you did a poster presentation as a part of your honors thesis, if you did a presentation as a part of a capstone project, those are things that you would still list on your CV. They are publications and presentations. Obviously, the more prestigious, in other words, presenting at a regional conference or even a national conference, has more weight, but all of those are valid to list on a CV. You probably want to at least have a statement, um, a few sentences each, on your research and teaching interests, especially if those are important to the graduate programs you're applying. If you've had any research experience, so each research lab or each research project that you've worked on outside of classes with a faculty member should have its own listing. And additionally, if you've had any teaching experience, both within the university, so if you've actually served as an undergraduate teaching uh, assistant, this would be something to list, but also teaching experiences in general. If you have had opportunities to teach outside of academics, 
both either at your workplace or maybe volunteering, those might be relevant as well. Your professional experiences, this depends on the field you're going into. The question to ask here, is the professional experience relevant to my long-term goals? So for instance, if you're wanting to become a counseling psychologist and you worked as a manager at a fast food restaurant, I would say that's not necessarily a professional experience worth putting on your CV. However, if you're interested in counseling psychology and you volunteered at a summer camp that worked with children dealing with emotional issues, that definitely would be a professional experience worth listing on your CV. And likewise, if you were interested in going on for an uh, MBA, uh, an advanced degree in management or industrial organizational psychology, again, that leadership role at a fast food restaurant might again become relevant. Again, if you're a member of any particular organization, psychology club, psychi, or any local organizations. And finally, you probably want to end your reference with actual, or you end your CV with references. So who are you actually using as letters of reference and what are their contact information? Now, generally speaking, the order of these is going to change depending on the programs that you're applying. I would generally say academic performance and accomplishments, as, long as, as well as contact information, is what's usually going to be the very first part of a CV. But from that point on, remember that you've got multiple pages to this, but the first page is the page most people are going to pay the most attention to. So if you've got particularly important experiences that set you above and apart from other graduate applicants, make sure you list them on the front page. As far as your recommendations, our recommendations for the CV, it should be clear and concise. It should be presented in a logical art order. Generally speaking, in any particular section, you want the newest experiences listed first and then go back chronologically. You want to make sure there are absolutely no mistakes, no spelling mistakes, no grammar mistakes, punctuation. Take Once you think the CV is done and you think you've completed your CV, Take it to the Writing Center here at SIUE. Have someone really look over it, looking for any mistakes. Because due to the fact that it's clear and concise, mistakes in spelling, grammar, or punctuation will stand out to a selection committee. And again, we generally speaking, we want the most recent accomplishments first. We want reverse chronological order. You're reading backwards in time as you go through a CV. So the sections, the very first section should be your contact information, name, address, phone number, and a professional email. Now recognize that if you're applying to graduate programs and you're graduating in December, you may not want to use an SIUE email as that email may not be active if you're no longer a student when people are trying to contact you the next semester. But whatever email you use, make sure it's professional. So for example, if you're using a Gmail account, Pretty much your name in some form is what that email should be. Nothing weird, nothing about your pop reference, culture references, or anything like that, or nicknames. The next section should be very succinct and should simply list the schools you've gone to and the degrees that you've gotten. And again, if you're applying and haven't completed your bachelor's yet, you would put the expected date of your graduation. You would also then put if you've had any uh, capstone experience, honors thesis, and finally your GPA. And remember again, if your psych GPA is higher than your average GPA, I would list both. Next, you're probably gonna leave your professional experiences, research and teaching experiences, relevant job volunteering. And again, I personally like the idea that when you list a research lab, a teaching assistant position, or even a job that you think is relevant, list the dates that you worked it, a short description of what you did, and go ahead and list who is your supervisor. You don't have to give contact information, but listing the name of who actually knows what you did there pretty much communicates that you're willing for someone to find out more information. It just puts a little more weight to you telling people what you've done as far as your research career. Next should be your presentations and publications, and this might actually take precedence if you're applying especially to a PhD program that has a strong research interest or research focus, and you've actually done a fair amount of presenting and publishing. The title should match the listing, and it should be done in APA style. You can veer from APA by underlining and bolding your name to make it clear where you were on each one of these projects. You can list projects that have been submitted, 
you can list projects that have been accepted and you can list projects that have been presented. And in fact, as you keep and maintain a CV, you'll often change these from submitted to accepted to presented. Also, if you have any special honors and awards and memberships, this would be a section under itself. And each one of these can be an actual kind of a header, if you will. And we'll, you'll actually be able to take a look at some example CVs on the Blackboard shelf for this um, bootcamp. So if you've had any scholarships, if you've been pinned on the Dean's List, if you've gotten any awards, if you're a student member of any psychological organizations, both national or local, and any leadership roles in student organizations are what you'd list here. And finally, your references. You should ideally have three references listed. They should be people you have already contacted to write you letters and have agreed. And ideally, they should be psychology related and at least two from your current school or the school that you're coming from. Remember that what you're doing with your CV is you're wanting, you're wanting to sell yourself. You're wanting to organize it in a way that really communicates that you're going to be a good applicant for the graduate program, but you also want to be fair in representing your accomplishments. And definitely don't try to pat. Now, I would say that generally speaking, I'm kind of a fan aesthetically, in other words, just based on the looks of it, of trying to keep your CV to a page limit. And what I mean by page limit is, that if you have a CV that goes for a page and, a, and just barely over a page, so you've got two pages, but the second page is a couple of lines, I would probably try to get that down to a single page, make it succinct. Likewise, if you're about halfway through a second page, think about not padding it, but is there anything else you could list? For example, one of the things you could list is particularly difficult classes that you did well in. Again, I think it looks better if you have two full pages instead of a page and a half. Now this is again kind of micro tweaking and I definitely want you to balance both being honest, representing your accomplishments correctly and not padding, but also thinking about is there something else that I left out. A final word of advice, the first time you sit down and write your CV, I would generally suggest an idea of basically trying to include anything that you think is relevant and then have your professors who are writing your letters give you some feedback. And what I often tell my students are, it's very easy for me to go, nope, that's not relevant, take it out. But if you don't tell me about it and you self-edited it, I can't tell you whether it should have been there or not. So I generally do suggest that for your first draft, you actually go for more, not less. It gives just a little bit more information. And honestly, it's not hard for faculty members to then look at that CV and go, yeah, go ahead and remove this section or remove this item. I don't think it's relevant.